Hello everyone and welcome to episode number four of Let's Talk Design. Today's a special episode because I'm joined by... Oh. That didn't work very well. <laughs> that didn't work very well. Him. So Brett sent in this question, how do you guys project manage a typical web project? And I thought probably the best thing to do was to bring in Ryan, who is... You never know what to do with your hands on these <laughs> things, do you? Hi! This guy. As I'm up in Leeds visiting Ryan at the moment, I thought it would be a good opportunity for us both to sort of step in and answer this question and talk about some of the tools and software that we use to manage a typical web project. This is about as close as we get to an official <laughs> no divide office. Yeah. Hence the pink cushions. Ryan had them well before the no divide thing. Anyway, let's get into the show. So Brett, the first tool that I'm going to talk about is Slack. Slack has been one of those amazing tools that's come around in the last sort of, what, 18 months? Yeah, like, it's really taken off over that. Like huge, it's gone massive. Um, if you haven't checked out, it's basically like a, a communication tool uh, for teams and it works really well for remote teams, which is what we are. It's, it's really great because actually you can create like a channel for your whole team and then everyone can chip in. We can invite clients into that room and they can see that work's going on. And also there's really good integrations with things like GitHub and Twitter and other stuff as well, isn't there? Yeah, so the way we kind of have it set up is we have a channel for every project we're working on. So um, an example would be we've just launched uh, the Charity Bank website, so we have the Charity Bank channel. Uh, and then we integrate that with all the different services that we use. We will often invite clients into a channel so that they can communicate. That can be like a source of you know, a communication route um, for the projects. We have some American clients who will just speak with us through that channel. Um, it's good for them as well because of the integration with other services like Trello and GitHub. So as we're working, these, these as we're making updates, these things appear in the channel and they can see progress happening without us having to constantly be emailing them and saying this has been done, that's been done. It becomes a passive way of um, everybody staying up to date on the project without having to constantly be in communication with each other which is a big time saver when you're trying to just focus and concentrate on, on what you're actually doing. You know? And it integrates with Giphy which which is, about, which, which is about as much use as a chocolate bag. It's getting worse. It's, it's getting, getting worse. worse. <laughs> but it also integrates with stuff like Trello, which we use. Yeah, so really very, very, well. very important would be Trello. Um, we use Trello kind of our project management. We take a kind of sprint approach to the way we structure a project. So at the start of every project, and we can probably share the Trello board, to be honest, and show people Yeah, I'll put it on the screen now. Yeah, we're talking. But yeah, we have a structure for it. So it, it, it works in... We have a column for like resources and references, one for the backlog, which is all the tasks outstanding for, for, for the project. Uh, anything that's blocked, so if there's a piece of front-end development work that requires uh, some design input, that front-end development work's blocked until Dan pulls his finger up. Um, then there'll be um, like a QA list, so the client can check it, or we can um, check it between each other, and then, and then a done list, so everything just works its way through the chain. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really good for, for me, so um, I'm really bad at using task apps. I'll find a new to-do list app every week, and so I'll generally, it used to be that projects were everywhere, there'd be one in Evernote, there'd be one in Notes, there'd be some stuff on Clear, and actually Trello, having, uh, with, with everybody using it on the team, having Trello as being the place where all tasks are, is actually really, really valuable. I, I, uh, I find that really good and you can you know assign it to certain people and stuff can't you yeah, so absolutely. I know what I've got to do and I can see comments going on and stuff like that. It's a really great passive way because this because you've got Slack on it and you've got a channel for a particular project and you've got Trello it's a really nice way of just people getting an overview of everything that's happening happening on particular projects even if you're not working on it which is also very useful and one of the advantages of Slack is because everybody can see every channel in the team and it can lead to spontaneous contributions. So even a developer, like if, if Matt, one of our developers, is working on a project and he's got a problem, he can be discussing it with the client in the board and Sam can jump in and say, oh, I know a great solution for that problem. So as a whole, that makes our project stronger because everybody can see everything that's going on. Yeah, I think those two are probably the, the most 
frequently used and for, for management of projects anyway. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So I guess Google Drive is probably the other one that we use a lot, but the client doesn't see as much. It's sort of the one place that we keep all our kind of documentation. So although our proposals go through InDesign and get nicely designed before they come to the client, everything is actually collaboratively created in Google Docs. That's a really good way to manage contracts, proposals, and things like service agreements and all that kind of documentation. It's good to keep a track of it and it has a good folder structure. So I find that's, that's pretty good, but it's kind of one of those ones that it's just there and it's, it's just handy. And uh, you know, we do have the option to invite people in to collaborate on the documents, which is always good. Of course, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't really use Dropbox these days, just sharing files and collaborating on files. It's, it's an absolute necessity. Um, to have. I can't imagine not having Dropbox now. How, how do like, I get things to each other? <laughs> yeah, and like coming up here, so I'm like 250 miles from Ryan and I don't have to worry about the fact that my work is just with me because it's on Dropbox, right? So we probably don't need to tell you guys too much about Dropbox in regards to what it, what it does, but I think it's just one of those staples. With clients, it's a really good way to share documents and files, especially, you know, being able to send huge PSDs or if anything like that. I mean, we very rarely hand over PSDs, but if we do need to send anything over large, then Dropbox just makes that super simple. I think one of the ones that has definitely changed for me in regards of before, when I was on my own, I didn't really see much of it, but now I'm seeing more, is, um, is definitely GitHub. You've been using it obviously for a while. You wrote a book on it. A long time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Link below, version control of Git. You should buy it, it's a great book. So how has our process kind of changed with you by using GitHub over the last sort of year or so? It's, I mean, I, mean, I think GitHub or a, and a company in service, there's numerous out there, uh, Beanstalk's another one, and uh, there's quite a few different services you can use in, in, as an alternative. But I think if you're working with anyone in development in the web, um, you need to at least have a GitHub account so that you can, so in case they're using it, because most people do, um, it is hugely popular. Um, but it, if you're going to collaborate, if there's more than one person working on a project, um, you need to use a service like GitHub because uh, you, you all need to share the same repository, which is then obviously stored in a remote location. But and beyond the fact that it's then backed up, it's not just sat locally on your machine. Um, it, you've got that, that level of security because it's being backed up, it's stored on the GitHub server, servers. Anyone who's collaborating on the project with you has a backup on their machine because they've pulled it down. So it, it, it becomes well, a distributed repository. You don't get those issues that you used to get back in the day where people would overwrite stuff. It well, just this, doesn't happen as well. Often, this, right? is, this is the beauty of the tools that we've now got because even you know even in Google Drive you can revert to a previous version of a file. Dropbox you can revert to a previous version of a file. Um, your, all your files are sat in Dropbox, so if you lose if you lose your laptop, it's a pain. <laughs> but we can buy you a new laptop and you're up and running that day. Yeah, you haven't lost yeah. anything, and, and that's how things have changed. Everything everything now there's, there's less there's fewer points of failure. Um, and, and because everything is distributed and you can you can access things from from anywhere yeah definitely in terms of like deployment and you know no longer having to rely on FTP to yeah. deploy sites I mean you're using what are you using at the moment we have a couple of ways of deploying so if we're doing kind of a standard website that's maybe built on craft or something like that we use a service called um, deploy um, we'll put the URL in deployhq.com um, the guys who developed Deploy actually have Codebase, which is um, like GitHub, so you could use Codebase and Deploy together. And you can automate it, you can set up a webhook with GitHub, so as soon as you push to a certain branch, it deploys to your host and automatically. Um, it's a really good service. Um, another one we use, because we do a lot of Laravel builds, um, is Laravel Forge. So this is a service that um, Taylor developed Laravel um, built. And again, it's um, you can you can it's, it's 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 like an intermediary service. So you've got your repository with GitHub, then you've got Forge, which is kind of monitoring any changes and deployments, and you can set up uh, SSL certificates and schedule tasks and all this kind of thing. And then that talks with your hosting, which can be anything. It can be DigitalOcean or Rackspace or Amazon. So it's kind of 
hosting, non-hosting specific, so you can pay for this service that handles your deployments. Uh, and it's actually really nice. Um, it, it lets you, lets you, it's optimized for Laravel, obviously. So it's got all the, all the, all the tie-ins that um, Laravel allows you to use, and it, it can just be a really quick way to get your site deployed and managed and everything. So it's a really nice tool. So we tend to use those two, Laravel Forge. And, and deploy. If you think about when we work on a project and we're, we're developing and we fix a bug, we literally work fixing the, you know, we're in this coded to fixing this bug, we do a commit, that updates the Slack channel, tells everybody that that bug's been fixed, it tells the client that that bug's been fixed, it goes off to GitHub, GitHub triggers a webhook and deploy picks that up and deploys that to the hosting and that's just from typing in commit bug has been fixed and it's all just automated but it updates the entire team, it updates the client, it updates the hosting and I think those are the things that you need to be thinking about because um, they save a massive amount of time. You think about the old days um, mm. where you would you would fix something then you would FTP and you'd drag and drop the file and wait for it to be there, check, make sure it's working, send an email to the client you know, it's, yeah. it's just, it's changed vastly. So I guess that probably covers our project management for the large majority of our projects. And I hope that that really helps you, Brett. And I hope that you found the stuff that we had to say valuable, somewhat interesting. We do try. We do try. <laughs> and um, yeah, let us know. Um, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I am at DE and Ryan is at Ryan Havoc. And obviously, if you guys really like the episode, then please let us know. Uh, I tend to do this a lot, but in the comments, whoop, whoop, let us know what you think. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this special episode of Let's Talk Design. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. And if you want to ask a question, then I'm going to show you how to do that now. <laughs> <laughs>